Hello students, we are up for lecture number 18 and uh, I had drawn this yesterday. Uh, the red lines as you can see are isoplex. The red lines are isoplex. I tried to make them accurate but I'm sure it's not accurate. But it's reasonably close uh, for getting a better understanding of the isoplet geometries, etc. You can refer to Phil Potts and Ague, Igneous and Metamorphic Petrology, or you can look up the book by Winter, Igneous, Igneous Petrology, or Igneous and Metamorphic Petrology. You can look it up. But the important, but there are several important points that import, that I would like to say. Repeating from the last lecture, because this is very crucial. Not only for this diagram, but also for all phase diagrams that involve solid solution phases. All phase diagrams important for solid solution phases. So understanding this is very, very crucial. Now you see here, these red lines are the isoplets. Why is it called an isoplet? Because along this line, all the crystallizing plagioclases have compositions anorthite 95. So that means anorthite 95 is in equilibrium at, at this temperature, the isotherm that passes through this temperature, and for the composition of the melt on which it is. Two things. This plagioclase of this composition, anorthite 95 along this line, means that an R595 crystallizes, say for example from this point, which has a particular isotherm passing through it, and also because of the composition of albite is to an type, the composition of the crystallizing plagioclase will always be an type. This is a direct uh, effect of the thermodynamic equation that I calculated yesterday, where x height is equal to x height in the melt and the function of temperature. That's exactly what is this is. Now the important point that I want to make is here. This is the important point. You see, this line joins up at anorthite 84, at 84, not 95. That is very crucial. That means this line doesn't join up with the base at an odd height 95. It merely gives you the isoplate position. An odd height 95 is here, right in the middle. But the position of the isoplate is an odd height 95. So in a phase diagram involving solid solution phases, you get to have the isotherms and you've got to have the isoplates Otherwise, you cannot interpret the phase diagram at all. You cannot do it. That's as simple as that. So, if, say for example, this is my melt composition. Remember why I'm drawing it like this? Because this is the temperature axis on this side. So, at this point, if you have the melt composition, if the melt composition, say for example, here, at this point, then this melt is in equilibrium at with this solid, and not like 90. That is what it is, exactly what it is. So I hope that I've been able to clarify some of the doubts that you might have carried from the earlier lecture. This is from the book, and you can look it up in the books as I have suggested, or any other book, or internet, or whatever that is. Now, there is an important point, continuing from where we were yesterday. If I start with the, if I talk about crystallization, talk about crystallization. Let's say I have a composition here, which is L0. And I, as I was discussing before, that if you have a melt composition L0, crystallization will start when you meet the isotherm of the liquidus surface. That's where the crystallization will start. 
So L0 will start at a particular temperature and if your L0 was here, it would have crystallized at a higher temperature. But both would have crystallized dioxide. And since the crystallization is from dioxide, the best way is that you join this line, sorry, and extend it to L1. I have told you how far the extension would be, and this would be your S1. This will be the composition S1, and this will be the XL1 composition of the melt, and this is after L0, L1, or uh, L0, L1 divided by S1, L1 should be the fraction of crystallization. 1 minus that value, I derived it yesterday, will be the amount of uh, fraction of melt remaining. Now, as we do this, at one point of time, we will reach this point, L1. This point, L2. I will have to erase this. This point, L2. Now you see what happens. What is the solid composition? It's still S2. If it has not reached this boundary, it has not reached this boundary. But if it has reached the boundary curve, then your solid S2 will not be only dioxide, but it will contain a little bit of plateau gas. Have you understood? So in which case, uh, I will go a little ahead and I will tell you. Okay, question. At L2, what is the composition of the solid? Right? What is the composition of the solid? The composition of the solid, if L2 is in the boundary curve, located on the boundary curve, then the solid will be, solid S2 will contain definitely the earlier formed proportion of dioxide plus initial crystals of plagioclase. Initial crystals of plagioclase. Okay. What is the, then the composition of the plagioclase? That's the important question. If, while, if L2 is on the boundary curve, then it will crystallize both dioxide and plagioclase. And we know that plagioclase is a solid solution. Therefore, the question is, what is the composition of the plagioclase? At this point, at this point of the boundary curve, Two curves will meet at that point. One is the isotherm. There will be an isotherm passing through this point. So that will give you the temperature of crystallization. And there will be an isoplate. An tight isoplate that will be passing through this composition. That should tell you what is the composition of the plagioclase? And it says it's close to 80. That means the plagioclase that is crystallizing is here. So now we have dioxide crystallizing, plagioclase crystallizing, and the melt is in equilibrium with it. That's the requirement of the boundary curve, where you have dioxide, pure, Plagioclase impure of this composition and not tight, uh, and not tight 80. And therefore, now if you join the three compositions, say for example, if you join this, you generate now a tie triangle. A tie triangle. What are the apices of the triangle? The apices of the triangle are the phases in equilibrium. What are the phases in equilibrium? Melt composition L2, dioxide pure, and plagioclase. 
of the composition of an orthite 80. That is an equilibrium. That is an equilibrium. Okay? So once you have this, I will tell you what happens later. That's more critical. Now, you know the temperature goes down this way. So once you crystallize diopside and plagioclase, if you crystallize diopside and the plagioclase, then the main composition should move in this direction, in the direction of decreasing temperature. And both diopside and plagioclase should coexist. So your new point L3 will be here. New point L3 will be here. Why? Because diopside and plagioclase of an composition anorthite 80 is precipitating, so the composition of the men should be moving diametrically away from it. Let's say the composition is L3. Now what happens? Again, pure diopside is crystallizing, so I join this tie line. What is, this is the melt composition, the melt is in equilibrium with pure diopside. What is the solid composition? What is the composition of the plagioclase? You can see this is 70, this is 80. So this should be somewhere around anorthite 72. Let's say anorthite 72 or 73. That means your anorthite content now is here. This is now your S3. That means the phases in equilibrium now are melt, Diopside, plagioclase of composition anorthite uh, 73. This is the phase. This is your composition. And you know how to find out the composition of the plagioclase. You see? And how do you find out the composition of the melt here? If you draw a line, like I told you, this should be the amount of diopside. And the rest of it should be a fraction of it. So you see the melt will be more albite rich than the solid. Remember binary phase diagram. The melt should be less anorthite rich than the plateau place. Now this diagram I will now therefore the tri-triangle now is here and then here. Have you understood? So I will draw this diagram here separately. So this is the boundary curve. This is D diopside, or let us say this is S3. Uh, no, this is diopside. And so now this is the melt composition, and this is the binary, and it's plotting at an orthite 72 somewhere here. And not height 72. So now your tie triangle is this. And where is your L0? L0 is here somewhere. You see, this is your L0. So that is now your L0, the initial composition of the mate. Now, several questions. You know, what will be the temperature of crystallization? Obviously, the isotherm that passes to this point should give you the temperature of crystallization. Correct. What is the melt composition? You know how you have to find the melt composition. You draw a line parallel to this. This should give you the diopside. Uh, and the rest of it should give you the plagioclase. But you know in the melt there is no plagioclase, albite and anorthite. So you can find out what will be the composition of the melt. What is the composition of the solid? Now you tell me, how do I find out the composition of the solid? What does the solid contain? Diopside and anorthite 72. Now if I ask you, what is the composition of the solid? What am I asking? I know diopside composition. I know the composition of an orthite 72. So when I say, I'm, what is the composition of the solid then? 
That means I want to find out the proportion of dioxide is to pleasure place. So if I know the proportion of the two minerals and I know the compositions of the two minerals, I will be able to give you the composition of the solid. So what is asked here is what is the composition of solid is what is the proportion of the two crystals of the of the solid that is crystallizing. Now you see, how do I find that? Remember, here was S2. So, here was S2, and now this is L3. Right? Now, I want to find out what is S3. What is S3? So what will I do? I take L3 and join this here. What have I done? This is L0. This is L3. So this composition, initial composition now, lies between the solid and the melt. And this is the dioxide anode type binder. So if I now write this as a and this one as B, then A divided by A plus B on this line, A divided by A plus B, this will be the amount of the proportion of plateau place and not height 72. A divided by A plus B should be the proportion of anorthite 70. And the reverse, B divided by A plus B, this should be the proportion of biotite. This will be the proportion of dioxide, which is pure. Dioxide is pure. So if I take this L3, join it with L0, and reach this binary dioxide and of type 72 this point determines this divided by the whole is the proportion of pleasure place and this divided by the whole is the proportion of dioxide okay now you can ask me sir what about s2 where is s2 yes at s2 remember here your composition here at L2 was here. So if you join it with L0, it will reach here. So what will happen? This point was almost here. That means what? A was almost 0. A was almost 0. That means the proportion of plagioclase was 0. Because zero means negligibly small. That is where plagioclase started to crystallize. I will repeat again. This is L3. So geometrically this is L0. So you take a line and extend it to the dioxide and octide bar binary. And this divides the binary into A and B. A divided by A plus B is the proportion of plagioclase of this composition. B divided by A plus B is the proportion of dioxide, which is pure. So, at L3 then, we have found out temperature of crystallization. We know the melt composition. Have you understood? We know now the composition of the solid. Remember the composition of the solid we can find out. This is dioxide. This is by an octite. We'll find out the composition of the solid. This composition of the solid, what is the proportion of minerals in the solid? We can find out. What is the composition of the solid? We know what is left. What is the fraction of mint? What is the fraction of mint? And solid. How much crystallization is happening? How, what is the fraction of melt remaining? So now, 
we take this and this point let us take this as p and this is q so what is p divided by p plus q what is this value p divided by p plus q you see this will be the fraction of solid fraction of solid p divided by p plus q and if you take q divided by p plus q then this is the fraction of liquid fraction of metal q divided by p plus q this will be the fraction of metal so this is how the geometry will be done so p divided by p plus q should give you the fraction of solid q divided by p plus q will give you the fraction of the metal a divided by a plus b will give you the proportion of plagioclase and b divided by a plus b will give you the fraction of dioxide so we know all parameters so we know all all parameters at every point in the phase diagram every point in the phase diagram we know therefore the all these parameters can be determined nothing needs to be marked up in phase diagrams nothing it's only for understanding once you understand phase diagrams you don't need to mark up anything it's just very very logical now if i ask you so what is happening during crystallization initially it was a line when you were in the dark side field it was a line the it was all tie lines l1 s1 l2 s2 all were tie lines this as soon as you join the binary uh, uh, by uh, the, the the phase boundary then you were on a tie triangle and now the tie triangle rotates in this way but it is pivoted to diopside it is pivoted to diopside and the tri triangle has to rotate why because l3 will continuously move in this direction away from the diopside plagioclase binary away from the diopside plagioclase binary but the melt composition with all so this since l3 would like the boundary curve an orthoid isoplex will progressively shift towards albite albite richer plagioclase and so the tri triangle essentially will go on rotating like clockwise direction pivoted to diopside and l3 on this boundary curve s3 on the baseline this is what we have till what time till what time when will this continue till what time that's the next question that i will answer from here q divided by p plus q is the fraction of melt yes or no q divided by p plus q is the fraction of melt so when crystallization will stop that means q will be equal to 0 when crystallization will stop q has to be equal to 0 or in other words this this base of the tie triangle should pass through l0 and this will be the tie triangle this will be the tie triangle where this one will be l last this one will be solid last and this one will be uh, this will be plagioclase last and this will be uh so this composition will be the solid last you will see 
the solid blast composition. The solid blast, this is the tie line now. This is the tie line. But you see the Q is vanished because there is no melt. So the eventual solid would be SL. This is the proportion where this divided by, that means DI SL divided by DI plagioclase last, that should give you the proportion of plagioclase. One minus that will be dioxide. So that is where crystallization will stop. And this will be the composition of the liquid. You can ask me, you can, you can say, you can tell me, how will I know the plagioclase last solid composition? Read it out. Take from this and join. You know that's going to pass to this. So you know this is the composition of the solid plagioclase. Have you understood? What will be the melt composition? What will be the melt composition for this? How will you find out the melt composition for this? The iodronic L4, L last as the melt composition. How will you do it? Normally you do it this kind in reverse process. So you shift this. So you shift L3 to L4, L5, L6, L7, L8 and continuously find the solid composition. S4, S5, S6, S7 and so on. And then you draw the time triangle. And this is the last sense of crystallization. So the last solid that crystallized has the same composition of the initial melt composition. Initial melt composition. This is important to realize. In case you have any other questions, please let me know through, the, through your mail or through the Google Classroom and I will respond to it. But I am repeating several times so that you understand it and, I, and then you can consult the books and I think you will get a right picture of what I intend to say and what the book intends to say and what really it is. So this is how the crystallization will start if your milk composition is in the dioxide field. You, but your milk composition could be also on the boundary curve. It's very simple. Isn't it any point? Your milk composition is here. You will have an isotherm and an isoplate passing to this point. The isoplate will give you the solid plagioclase composition. This is the melt. You know dioxide will crystallize. Join the triangle. Done with. So you will know exactly all the parameters. Now once again, what are the parameters? Temperature of crystallization is one parameter. Composition of milk is one parameter. Composition of the solid, S1, L4, all those, is the parameter. If it is a multi-solid, multi-mineralic solid, then you should know the composition of each mineral. You can see how it's done. What is the fraction of solid? You can do. What is the fraction of liquid? You can do. What will be, when will the melt composition stop? You can do. So you can do everything. You can find out everything. And there is nothing to mark. Once you have understood it, it does not need to. Any memorization is not required in a phase diagram. Just stop. Okay. Now we go into another part, and this is a slightly more complex. But if you... I will try to erase a few lines here.
something like that. Yeah. Now, what happens? The next question is what happens when the melt composition lies in this field or in the plateau place field? This is L0. This is L0. What happens when the melt composition lies here? Now once again. If the melt composition lies here, then there will be two lines passing through this point. One is the isotherm. At that point, crystallization will start. And you will have an isoplet. Have you understood? So that particular isoplet, let's say here it's 80, here it's 90, maybe this isoplet is about height 82. Let's say this isoplet, you know, this is 980, this is 90, let's make it, this is 82. So what will happen is, so if this is 82, then you will join it here. Do you understand? If it is 82, then you join, this is the plagioclase which crystallizes. Plagioclase crystallizes and not height 82. That's the first point. What is the composition of the solid that will crystallize and not height 82? Now, which direction will the liquid move? Obviously, the liquid will move in this direction. Is it not? The liquid will move in this direction. So, if I write this, as S1, then what will be L1? Uh, sorry, what? Yes, uh, what will be L1? How will I find out? Same logic as before. M divided by M plus N, and you know the length of this line. You can find out this line. Have you understood? Again, I will repeat. If you have this L0 as the melt composition then this will lie on the isotherm and an isoplate. So this will give you the temperature of crystallization and the composition of the crystallizing solid, which is anorthite 82. Now the question is, what is the fraction of the solid and melt? Let's say you take the fraction of melt is 0.95. So if fraction of, if say for example, if you take the fraction of melt as 0.95. So this is M and the whole thing is N. So I did the calculation before. If you know this length and if your fraction of melt is 0.95, you will be able to find out which is your L1, yes or no? You will be able to find out L1, but there will be a problem at L1. What problem? Here you see, the moment you extend this, the moment you extend this, it comes into a different temperature and intersects a different plagioclase isoplate. And that isoplate will be shifted to lower an orthite content. Have you understood? It will be lower an orthite content. So now your solid has to be lower in an orthite content, but it has to pass through L0 it has to pass through L, um, uh, L, it has to pass through L0 and it will have a point here. Say so this is L2 and this is S2. In other words, let me, let me draw it here. I start with L0 and this is the base. Huh. And this is the base. So you start with this composition, 
एस वन एल वन और एस वन दिस इज एल वन बट एट दिस पॉइंट there will be a new solid that is forming s2 at a lower temperature and that s2 will be here so now if you join s2 to l0 you will reach here this is your l2 have you understood this is your l2 and all the while as you crystallize more and more plagioclase you see the slime i will notify you let's say this line uh l2 l0 and s2 let's say this line let's say this is m and this is n so uh n divided by m plus n is the fraction of melt have you understood n divided by m plus n is the fraction of the melt so what will happen this length n has to increase or has to decrease but this decreases because from here to here this decreases but also l2 this point increases have you understood this l2 point will go on increasing this way and s2 you can see the length of s2 here and the length of s2 this l s2 is smaller than s1 at the same time the rock the plagioclase is crystallizing so m should also increase so what happens you will have a series of lines like that where this is l1 l2 l3 l4 so what will happen your crystallizes crystallization sequence would change please excuse me diagram is a situation like this let me redraw it again so this is s1 s2 s3 s4 this is l1 l2 l3 l4 so you see here this is your l0 all the tie lines have to pass through the initial composition all the tie lines have to pass through the initial composition what are the requirements the crystallizing plagioclase should become albite richer albite richer the melt fraction melt fraction has to decrease or the solid fraction has to decrease so say for example if i make this as m and this is n the n which is the liquid fraction has to decrease 
from S1 to S4, M1 has decreased, but N has decreased, but so has M increased. So the liquid fraction also increases. So what happens is that when you start crystallizing in a solid solution phase, then the uh, line along which the uh, liquid composition moves is not a straight line like you have for pure phases. It's a curved line. It's always a curved line. So you have L1, S1, L2, S2, L3, S3, L4, S4. So the, 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 as you move from here to here, N decreases and M increases. That means N is the fraction of the melt. So the fraction of the melt decreases, but M increases. So the fraction of the solid increases. It is necessary and all pivoted to this value L0. All pivoted to this value of L0. And once you reach the boundary curve, then of course dioxide starts to precipitate and then you will have your phase diagram. There you get the triangle back. L4 is the melt, dioxide here, and S4 plagioclase. So this is L4 melt composition, S4 solid composition of the plagioclase, and now dioxide joins it. Because you have L4, you have reached the boundary curve. So precipitation should include dioxide. So as like before, if your, if your dioxide plagioclase, remember your initial composition is here. So L4 has to move in this direction. So now, say for example at this position L4, there will be an isoplate and an isotherm. So you can plot your S5. You can plot your S5 here. And you can plot your L5 here and you plot your dioxide here so you can see the tie triangle like this moving clockwise once more. Your initial liquid curve is like this and then like this and again as before when will what will be the what will be the uh, solid composition at S5 you take L5 and pass it through L0 and this will be the composition of S5. This will be okay, PL1, PL2, PL3, PL4 and this is PL5. But this is S5. You see, this is S5. Uh, sorry, this is S5. This point is S5. This is L0. This is L0 and this is now your S5. So now again, like A and B, you can find out the fraction. And if you have P and Q, you can find out the fraction of milk versus solid. And if you know A and B, you can find out the fraction of dioxide and plagioclase in the solid S5. Have you understood? So the solid composition is S5. It is composed of two minerals, dioxide and plagioclase. Plagioclase 5 and dioxide here. And the proportion of plagioclase dioxide is this divided by the whole. That is the proportion of dioxide. And this divided by the whole is the proportion of plagioclase. So you know the melt composition, the temperature of crystallization, the composition of the solid, the composition of the minerals that make up the solid, and the melt composition. You know all the parameters. And as before, when will crystallization stop? Very simple. Take this point through a zero. Take this point through a zero. Let's say this is PL6. PL6, right? This is the solid composition. Where did I find what is dioxide? So dioxide is this. Plagioclase 6. 
How will I find the melt composition? How will I find the melt composition? Uh -huh. You have forgot. On this boundary curve, you see, on this boundary curve, this PL6 isoplate will meet somewhere. The PL isoplate for PL6 will meet somewhere on the boundary line. That will give you the composition of the belt. So this is what it is all about. So from here, you join it here. So how did you find out L6? L6 is, this was PL6, nothing but when you join the outside with L0 and extend it to the base, you get that PL6 composition. Once you get the PL6 composition in plasma place, so you know on which isoplate you are, which of these three isoplates you are, take that particular isoplate of PL6 and go to the boundary curve. The point where it intersects is where the same thing on the other diagram. So in crystallization normally, for example, when you're crystallizing from a melt, normally if you have a melt, you find the isoplate to find out the plagioclase. But if someone asks you, say for example, if someone asks you, what will be the composition? Uh, uh. Okay, so this will be, the, remember another thing, that the plagioclase composition, albeit is the anorthite composition at this point, is the same as the plagioclase composition. Remember, these are uh, uh, similar triangles. So, if you have PL6, this line when you join, you get it on the similar triangle. So, the proportion of albeit is to anorthite in the initial mill should be the same as albite versus anorthite of the plagioclase of the crystallizing salt. And what will be the composition of the mill? From this, read the isoplate. You know it is PL6. Now find out the composition of the isoplate which has PL6 composition. Extend it to the boundary curve. The point where it meets the boundary curve, that is the last mill. That is the last mid composition. So summarizing, before we conclude this uh, uh, lecture, summarizing, uh, if you have a boundary diagram like this, then if your phase field is here, your melt crystallizes this way. Have you understood? If your initial melt falls in the plagioclase diagram. But if your initial melt falls in this diagram, then the curve is like that and like that. So if it's plagioclase, if it's dioxide, pure phase crystallization, the initial part of crystallization is straight away from the vertex. Here also, it is away from the vertex of the high temperature crystallization, but the, the curve, the path is curved. The path is curved, but crystallization is on the same direction. So there are two types of paths in this, in this phase diagram. One is if you start with your phase crystallization, so the initial part is the same, is straight line. But if you start with plateau phase crystallization, which is a solid solution, your path is always curved. Your path is always curved. So that is the only difference. The rest of it is the same. The tie triangle business, it's the same. And remember this construction. So this boundary curve. Boundary curve, <coughs> this construction, initial melt, or if this is the initial melt, this construction is very important. This gives you fraction of solid is to melt, this gives you the fraction of the precipitating minerals in the solid. And these are the compositions of the solid, total composition of the solid. So much fragile case. Proportion of plagioclase, so much proportion of dioxide. And here you have so much fraction of melt, so much fraction of melt, 
uh, so much fraction of solid and so much fraction of crystal. Okay, then I stop here for today. Uh, I will upload these slides and we will continue uh, some of these discussions in the next video lecture. Thank you.